A new character? A new map? Oh my god, it's so exciting! Hey everyone, and welcome to Overwatch News Update. We're putting this out a day late, sorry, that's my bad. Uh, this is November 9th, Thursday, and we're going to start off with the most important news of the Overwatch week, Moira, the new support character. So, Moira comes in as a new support character that is kind of the foil to Mercy. She's another one of these characters which is a doctor, super into sciencey things, really trying to improve the world, but she's doing it through kind of nefarious ways. As we see through her origin story development, she's tied into Talon, very close to how Reaper got his transporty, teleporty things and his ability to shapeshift, and also connecting to um, Widowmaker and different things. So, Moira is a pretty cool character, but what does she do? So, we'll run through her abilities. Now, her basic ability and her basic attack is uh, her regular fire is a healing thing that is a beam which goes from her left hand, which heals her allies. Now, her alt fire, short range beam, that attaches to an enemy and drains their health while also refilling her own health and biotic weapon energy. So she uses up her ammo with her left hand by healing people and gains ammo back with her right hand while damage dealing, which is pretty cool. Now her other two abilities that she has are the biotic orb, which is something that she sends out kind of in the same way that Symmetra sends out her shield now, but she can choose to either do it with a healing uh, tactic or a decay damage dealing tactic. So it's kind of like a her long range heal, um, similar to uh, Zenyatta's heal, but it is a little bit more passive and a little bit less predictable because it kind of bounces around. So you send it out in one direction, it kind of bounces around and then kind of dissipates after a little bit. Her other ability is much akin to sort of a blend of Reaper, Tracer, and Sombra. So it's called Fade, and it allows her to do a quick sprint teleport where she becomes invulnerable and kind of moves from space to space. Now, this is an intriguing character set, and I can't wait until they nerf her soon. But what really we can get from this set is that she'll be a highly mobile, kind of in and out, doing up close damage. Locking on kind of like how Symmetra does with her gun, or being able to heal. So it's an intriguing kind of blend between what I see as a blend between Symmetra and Mercy or Ana. Whereas Ana can damage, deal, and heal with the same attack, uh, Moira is kind of doing the same way. Now, Moira's ult. Uh, so her ultimate ability is called Coalescence. And this is a shooting a very long range beam that can either heal allies, in the video it's shown to be able to heal teammates going through Farah's ult, or it can damage deal, and it can pass through barriers. So no longer is Reinhardt's shield, Winston's bubble, anything to worry about, because with Coalescence, you can pass through them. It's an interesting combo set, and we'll see how she works out in the real world. The coolest part of this character, by my standards, is the fact that she has a very David Bowie aesthetic. So we can hope to see a lot of David Bowie influenced skins coming forward, and that would be super cool, man. That's a terrible, terrible accent. Of course, Moira got announced at BlizzCon along with the new map. So the new map is kind of Blizzard's ode to itself. It's super meta. Uh, it has references to a bunch of Blizzard properties such as Hearthstone with the Hearthstone Tavern, WoW with Snacksaramus, and another place where... Uh, it's the landing perch with the griffins, and then also even lost and found vikings. So, it's got a lot of internal references you'll get to see and play around on the map soon. It will only be released in early 2018 though, so we'll look out for that after the new year. In other news, the Overwatch World Cup for 2017 has finished. And in a surprise to literally no one, South Korea took the championship. But it was in a path that actually was pretty interesting. So their first match was against the U.S., and that was a tough one for the U.S., because even though the U.S. came out strong and was able to uh, even capture and push South Korea 
to the point where they were frightened that they might lose their first round, South Korea relaxed, settled in, and came back. This is mostly due to the 17-year-old Flower from the South Korean team who switched to Widowmaker on Assault on Hanamura and just sniped and headshot person after person after person. If you haven't seen this video, it's awesome. There's a short clip that we have, link in the description below, and it's amazing to see the talent of this 17-year-old kid. He's just getting headshot after headshot after headshot, taking out the team. Even those mercy reses are useless because she's just going after him. Or, well, he, character Widowmaker. Um, it was incredible to see, and I haven't seen sniping talent of that caliber in a long time. Uh, so South Korea then went on to face Canada in the final round, and Canada pushed them to being within meters of winning, but South Korea took it all, and that's that. But that's not all the news that came from Overwatch World Cup. What was pretty interesting is that one Reddit uh, post say, stated that a French politician, Denis Maseglia, 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 I'm not positive on that last name, uh, supported his countrymen by congratulating them in Parliament for their fourth place finish at the Overwatch World Cup. It's pretty cool that Overwatch is getting so much, so big, so fast that it's even getting mentioned in Parliament. Uh, the other th news from Overwatch is a new animated short which came out earlier. I'm pretty sure most of you have seen it, but it is an amazing short as always, telling the story of Reinhardt and how he came to join Overwatch. Turns out he wasn't originally selected for the team. It's really cool to go see it, and the lesson that you have to learn is all Reinhardt mains, don't leave the team. We've had some Overwatch controversy within Overwatch League. The San Francisco Shock had to let go of their team manager, Max Bateman, after allegations of sexual assault. There's a zero tolerance policy, and Andy Miller made that clear that that was the reason that he was let go at the time. It's interesting to follow the developing story, link in the description below, as Kotaku has been doing a pretty good job covering everything that's happened. Max Bateman is claiming that the allegations are false, and that's going on in the one hand, but the victim is, has filed a police report, etc., going by the handle on Twitter, Christy Lynn. I recommend following this story in the description below through the Kotaku article. Very good information. It's keeping up to date. And it's good to see that this situation is being treated so um, seriously and the proper actions have been taken until anything is, is really prosecuted to its full extent. But I'm glad to see that Energy are supporting uh, women in this case, especially with all the controversy going on, the Weinstein case, etc. in California as is. Another controversy in Overwatch is loot boxes. Now, if you're very interested in this whole dimension of loot boxes as controversies, we did a pretty good podcast a few weeks back that you can go check out. We covered a lot in terms of loot boxes in gaming, in different aspects, especially related to teaching children how to gamble. Now, the Blizzard CEO and co-founder came out with a statement that he didn't think that loot boxes in Overwatch should be lumped into this controversy. The main issue being that Overwatch doesn't have gambling in loot boxes because you can't take the rewards that you get from the loot boxes and go back and sell them as you could with Steam or other platforms in which you can get real money, uh, real monetary value for the items that you receive from loot boxes. However, this could be not true as well because there's always the things of even if you're going against the terms of service, you can sell your account and then the items that you have have real world value. Now, again, this is going against the terms of services, but it's kind of a point where there could be some contention and some controversy even within the court system. So it's intriguing to see that the ESRB recently said that loot boxes weren't gambling and that the Blizzard CEO is backing that up in a further way of saying that getting even further away from the controversy saying that there is no real monetary value on the back end, which is part of what gambling uh, needs to be recognized as part of gambling. So in gambling, you have the purchase of whatever it is, the chance mechanism, and then the value of the item that you get on the back end. Now, this has been something that's been debated. So for instance, a pack of baseball cards isn't technically considered gambling, even though there could be monetary value on those baseball cards on the back end. But it's interesting to see how loot boxes will fit into it. Will they be considered part of this 
baseball card pack theory or will they actually go back to being kind of like a lottery system and be considered gambling and furthermore will loot boxes like blizzard is saying be considered not gambling because there is no monetary value it's an intriguing story that we're seeing develop right in our time as we're going so uh we'll keep you updated as much as we can finally our favorite story of the week now this isn't an overwatch story it's a sad story for me um and the meverse shut down this week and there were a bunch of drawings that people posted with a lot of different innovative and also really crass uh craftsmanship so we've had some of the greatest farewells to the meverse and some of the Final drawings of dicks that you can get on the Miiverse, obviously. Anyway, uh, if you want to check out any of those, link in the description below to a article that has some of the best. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out our Overwatch news update this week, and we hope you enjoyed this Overwatch replay. <laughs>
can get callouts if she stands right here. Of course, she's blind to this side and someone can come over here, but usually that doesn't happen around this um, SR, which is unfortunately 1300. So I'm standing in a central location. I'm pretty safe in this point. I have sight lines on this, and I have sight lines of enemies coming here pretty much. And I can, if I hop up a little bit, I can shoot over here. So luckily, this is a fairly good spot for me to launch rockets in because I don't even really have to aim. I just have to at least hit this general area. Just any surface in that area will do damage to the team. This is a pretty good spot for Farah, and she can back up if she needs help. So Farah is in a good spot. So. We see this diva here, and she's essentially rushed in without her team. She should be dead, but she puts up defense matrix and backs up a little bit, but uh, that's alright. So we're doing damage to her, and she's out of her mech, which is really awesome, and um, I'm trying to put as much damage and keep up the pressure in this area as the Reinhardt pushed in over here by himself, so that's a lot of trouble for him. Or it should be, anyway. So I'm launching rockets into here to create a fire zone so no one follows the Reinhardt in to help him out, even though he's fairly out of the way anyways. So, moving along... I see that I know I saw the shadow and could also hear that a Pharah was coming up here to stand up here. Don't really know why you would stand up there as Pharah. You have plenty other options. You can just hover around this area up here, or even up here, I think you can go that high. Um, and then you can also see the Reinhardt over here who's moving across. So I just sort of launch air, uh, rockets in there. I see I'm taking a lot of damage, so I back up. Simple uh, play for Farah to make, and uh, that's all I do. So I go get this health pack, and um, this is not this is not an optimal play. So, and this again. I know our S or my SR is not very high, I understand that. This is more of a video to help you guys out to see, um, it, it, essentially these videos help us out just as much as they help you. So we can, it's very good if you want to become better at a competitive multiplayer game, uh, Overwatch being a prime example, to overlook and record some of your footage because then you can um, see where you make mistakes and, for instance, this play. Farrah should really avoid being on the inside. Um, she excels when there's large open spaces with various areas for cover that she can access that enemies can't really access. Standing here is a death trap. Farrah can't really... she can't boost up. She's just gonna hit her head on the ceiling and um, that's pretty much it. She's gonna be in a lot of trouble if she uh, is there. So. Um, I'm launching some rockets in, and no one's really doing damage to me. McCree could have killed me easily, but uh, well, unfortunately he did not. So I get out of the situation, and now I'm in cover. So this is exactly a good place for Farah to sort of... Um, this is a solid place if you're playing Farah either to hang around this corner or this corner over here. Um, you can sort of poke out, fire a couple rockets, poke back in, and back to cover. Or you can sort of do the same thing with this surface as well. So that's a pretty solid place. But if you're back here, you're not. Uh, you have to be fairly accurate with your rockets. So Ryan dashes in. I see that, and I try to eliminate the threat here. Um, as does everyone, but their whole team follows, and um, I'm missing a couple rockets. But luckily, we end up clearing the threat. It's no big deal. So if we look back on that. Um, I could have reacted a little, f well, I think I reacted fairly quickly, but um, I could have landed a couple more rockets, um, but unfortunately I was not facing the right way to react to that. So I back up a little bit using my um, concussion blast, and I could have stopped this, or I could have at least launched a rocket onto him then, so he would have went down faster, but he goes down fairly fast enough. Luckily I land up pretty solid direct hit on that soldier, and um, things go out pretty well. So I'm dealing with this McCree um, very poorly, and then I see Mercy. So in the priority of the basically a, a hierarchy of, that you should go through in your head using any character, you eliminate your th top threats, and then, and we've said this many times on Overwatch Replay, but you eliminate your top threats and then you eliminate the rest of the threats. 
So the primary threat for Farah is generally Soldier 76. Um, He's a pretty big threat, he can take out Farah pretty easily if she's not being properly supported, and that's why you need to take him out number one. Your next priority should be Mercy, in my opinion, um, should the team have one, which generally uh, most team comps run a Mercy nowadays, so you should definitely take her out next because she's a huge support to the enemy team, and if you take out Mercy, they're going to have a lot of trouble taking the point, or whatever it is the objective is. Um, so I saw that Mercy, so I decided to do some damage to her. If I was a little more accurate, um, which is something I gotta practice, then she'd be dead. But she uses her ult, and at that point I should stop focusing on her. Because she's gonna fly up into the air, and then it's gonna be very difficult for me to land a rocket because there's no surfaces to bounce off the rocket and explode it. So, I fired two rockets, which is a waste of time. And um, I decide to change targets and I go for D.Va, but then I'm on the ground. So now I see this Reinhardt. Two thoughts should be going, or one thought should be going through my head, or two. There are two pretty main threats, to me, anyways. Um, McCree can have a, have, can, if he's a good McCree, or if she's a good McCree, uh, you can take out Farah pretty easily as McCree. So I should be focusing on Soldier for sure, or McCree. But it looks like this diva is having uh, no problems with McCree, and I should not be firing on the Reinhardt. I should be taking out the threat of Soldier, who is advancing forward with the Reinhardt. Um, but it looks like I keep focusing on Reinhardt, and um, and then they sort of get away. So as Farah, I can't really chase them in here because that's certain death. Soldier can easily take me out if I can't fly anywhere. So that must mean they're coming up here, right? That's where they're going. They would come up here logically. I still have this Steve in front of me, and um, that's something I have to assess. I also have my ult, and I start taking damage from McCree, and thus, McCree. I'm dead. So he actually gets a very nice shot on me right now. Good shot. And this is the threat you have to deal with, fighting, fighting a McCree. He uses his ult, gets two people, and a mech. And um, as you'll see, they pretty much take the point from that point. Actually, uh, he also takes out the <laughs> Arisa. Didn't even see that. He cleared four people essentially, or five people. It's pretty impressive. So, knowing that in my mind, if you turn on the kill feed, which it should already be on by default, but uh, if you see five people die and that this is going up, your immediate thought should not be, oh, I'm going to save the day and for the point. It's not going to be like that. So you just have to wait, and that's what I'm doing. I'm sort of trying to poke, um, do some damage, and uh, but they're just gonna heal it off. So that's why I back up, and uh, we're being told to defend on the point. They now have an Ana, as you can see, I took some damage there. She was surprisingly scoped, but there you go. Um, right here, primary threats, right? So I launch a rocket here, but there was a soldier here who's standing still for some reason. Um, that should be my primary, he's my primary threat. Always take out the soldier first, unless Mercy is pretty much directly in front of you, then just take out the Mercy. But I land a shot on soldier because he's standing still, whatever. I'm taking a lot of damage, but Mercy maybe prematurely uses her ult. I think um, no one was really in trouble, aside from me, of course, um, which she could have healed up very nicely, but now I suppose we're in trouble. You know what? It was it was a good ult in anticipation of, um, of all the things to come. So they actually had a fairly coordinated uh, push here. They ran in, they dashed in with Reinhardt, who no one contested. Um, I suppose I could have done damage to him, but I, I know no one was doing any damage to him. As you can see, he had pretty much full health. Um, then they send in Diva ult, so this was actually fairly well. Rein ulted, then Diva ulted. There's not much we can do about that except back off the point, back over here, back over here. Um, but if you're knocked down, you're pretty much going to die that. So a tough situation we're put in. Um, I sort of fly over here, around back, and try to do as much damage as possible. I think I'm thinking there are 
four people in a line here. Um, there's Reinhardt, who's just swinging his hammer. No one's contesting him at all. And I need to do something. I've just lost three people on my team um, to the Diva ult. So what am I going to do, right? Got to use my own. <laughs> so I get the Mercy, sure. Um, but it looks like this is pretty much the end for us. Um, at least our initial defense. We didn't do such a good job on our initial defense, and I believe... I'm considering, well, I suck, I'm getting countered super hard, so I need to switch off, but there's no real time. And round one is complete, and thus ends our video here. So we're trying again to switch up our format, ever-changing with Hungover Gaming. So please tell us if you like this format, if you'd rather um, get maybe more videos per week, we can split into three separate videos, um, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if the video goes that long because sometimes matches are longer or shorter depending on how your match went um, but also definitely leave a like if you like the video subscribe to us and if you like to see us commentate over your video consider sending it in to gaminghungover at gmail.com all the information's in the uh, description below and we'd totally love to take a look at your matches and maybe help you guys out uh, I think that would be a fun thing that we could do provided you guys play Overwatch um yeah, so tell us if you like this format. We're trying to make these videos shorter. Um, and yeah, that's that. So thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week, or maybe tomorrow, with the uh, exciting next part of this match. Hope you guys are ready. Catch you guys next week. Peace out.